everyone in today's session i'll be teaching you how to trace the tweets diagnostic triangle which as the name suggests was introduced by charles tweed so this cephalometric analysis consists of three planes so first is the frankfurt horizontal plane mandibular plane and the long axis of the lower incisors but before we trace these planes it is important that we look at a few cephalometric points which we will need in this analysis so those two points are porion and orbital so according to jacobson porion is the most superiorly positioned point on the external auditory meatus located by using the ear rods of the cephalostat so this is basically the mechanical porion so whenever we look at the cephalogram we are able to make out the radio opaque ear rod and the most superiorly positioned point on this is our porion so in this cephalogram over here we can well have a look at this radio pic ear rod and the most superior point of this is the porion now for the second point orbital so this is the lowest point on the inferior rim of the orbit so this is our orbit rim this is the inferior border and this point is the most inferior point so again in this cephalogram we are able to make out this slightly radio opaque rim the lowest point of this is the point orbital so whenever we start hand tracing a cephalogram it becomes important to mark or etch the radiograph at three points so whenever we overlap it with the sheet and we replace it we are able to make out the exact position on which the initial points were marked so when we start tracing sorry for the bad drawing so first we need to mark and trace the soft tissue of the face and ideally you do it in a single go without lifting your pencil up so this is the soft tissue so as i uh, mentioned previously we have three planes over here so first is the frankfurt horizontal plane so this plane is formed by joining the lines porion and orbital okay so let me draw straight lines for you okay so this is our fh plane from porion to orbital okay done so next is the man mandibular plane so we also know for a fact that different analysis use different mandibular planes so for tweets so you can remember it by t and t so for tweets the tangent passing from the lower border of the mandible is considered the mandibular plane so this is our mandibular plane in tweets analysis now for the long axis of the lower incisor it is very easy we need to draw the lower incisor so i can see you can visualize it this is the most preclined incisor i am taking i'll draw it again so this is my long axis of the lower incisors and the incisor i considered is this one the most proclined lower incisor so on joining these lines and extending these line backwards to this line and extending these two plane backwards what you will get are three angles so this is the fmpa the frankfurt mandibular plane angle which is formed by the intersection of fh line this plane right here and this plane which i have mentioned previously is the mandibular plane so the second angle is incisor mandibular plane angle impa which is formed by the intersection of the long axis of the late incisor and the mandibular plane and the third angle is fmia which is formed by the intersection of frankfurt frankfurt horizontal plane and this long axis of the incisor so now let's have a look at the value the mean value and the range of these angles as well as the implications of increase or decrease in these values so this is the neat and clean tweets diagnostic triangle that you get after tracing these cephalometric marks and joining and extending those planes so first is the fma angle or the frankfurt mandibular plane angle okay so the mean value of this angle is 25 with a range from 16 to 35 degrees so this is fma angle 25 degrees 
So any increase in this angle like this will indicate that the person is a vertical grower while a decrease will indicate horizontal growth of the patient. Second angle is IMPA indicating the position of the incisor on the mandibular plane this one the average value is 90 degrees with a range from 85 to 95. So any increase in this value increase in this angle like this will indicate a proclined mandibular incisor while a decrease in this value would indicate a retroclined one. Now for the FMIE or FMPA angle so the mean value of this is 65 degrees with a range from 60 to 75 and it's a, uh, the, it works opposite to that of IMPA. So increase in this value will indicate retroclined incisor while a decrease will indicate more proclined ones. So you can memorize this simple table right here for the values and the implication and that's all for tweets cephalometric analysis.